John Lilly once put it this way, there are no limits at all to the human mind whatsoever, except those we impose on ourselves because of our beliefs. And those limits are also beliefs to be transcended. And that's a view that suggests that the possibilities of human transformation are virtually infinite. That we have no way of knowing the outer horizon of what it means to be human. And really, to understand all this, everything, you have to go very, very deep in, into uh, a study of uh, history, consciousness, neurophysiology, everything. You have, to be, you have to be the supreme eclectic type of uh, leaning, and you really have to be wanting to know who you are and, and what everything is about. The thing that you'll find when you go to sacred sites, if you're very humble about it, is that you are on a personal journey and the sacred site will respond to you in a way that is appropriate only to you. The information is always what you are searching for. And it's the intent you give uh, that energy that defines whether it is used for right action or not. And it is inside these sacred spaces that you will be reminded that you are a god, that you are a bright star. So what you're trying to do is move through the course without ricocheting off walls or creating karma. You're trying to slide through things smoothly. How do you do that? It's called flowing. There is a technique that you can do that will allow you to touch some part of your inner being that has more knowledge than your conscious state does. Something wrong, Charlie? Yeah. Jack. He's, uh... There's been an accident in the caves. Jack's trapped in a cave-in. Is anyone trying to get him out? Yeah, there's a bunch of people there now. And why aren't you with them? You didn't come here to tell me about Jack, did you? Oh, my stash, Luck. I can't stand feeling like this. Come here. I'm gonna show you something. What do you suppose is in that cocoon, Charlie? A butterfly, I guess? No, it's much more beautiful than that. That's a moth cocoon. It's ironic, butterflies get all the attention, but moths, they spin silk. They're stronger, they're faster. That's wonderful, but you see this little hole? This moth's just about to emerge. It's in there right now, struggling. It's digging its way through the thick hide of the cocoon. Now, I could help it. Take my knife gently widen the opening and the moth would be free, but it would be too weak to survive. The struggle is nature's way of strengthening it. Now this is the second time you've asked me for your drugs back. Ask me again and it's yours.
Hey guys, welcome. As you can see, it's quite dark. I've left this quite late in the day because I've been doing a lot of homework on preparing for this. So I'm going to try and cram a lot in very quickly. So I hope you're very well. I hope everything's going well your end. Thank you for being here as always. This is going to be Galactic Special Forces Part 30 and I'm not sure what I'll totally call it. 22D Reality Authority time or something like that but basically what I've shared in the past about in the last few videos about working out the mechanics particularly since influences part four when the invader network and stuff and operating at 22d so if you want to go check there or I might put the actual images up on my Instagram page so it's a bit easier to refer to but I think the darkness is kicking in a bit I've underestimated how early it gets dark now because it's already March it's crazy so if you watch my video during the week I offered that um, I was brewing to release a, a release last weekend and I just got a bit late on a Sunday night early hours and I just I could have pushed on through and did it but it wouldn't have been the best time to release it and I had a few hours at 4 a.m. In the, in the morning to do so I just decided to pull back and um, let that go and not do it and not push forward. So I, I've actually done a recording from last week that's the main body of this that will be pretty good because we've had some pretty massive GSFs and, win and victories and worked out something massive about the Sphinx, all right? So there's energy off-world sort of stuff going with that where we worked out that all the government sort of stuff was harvesting 70% of humanity's energy and sending it off-world via the Sphinx. So what I'll be doing in the main body which is the recording from last week that I was going to use so if you see me like this it's it's a week later than that and um, yeah I'll be including a lot of that so that will be the main body a bit later but I just wanted to do a bit of a a prep and a intro with that because it's given me because Egypt and the Sphinx and stuff it's been a bit of everyone's fascinated about that it's a bit of focus and um, It'll give me an opportunity to share a pretty awesome Ashiana clip that's a bit of an overview, but it also gets into the relative to recent history of things going on, such as what happened with the Babylon Massacre and what it did to our bodies, because getting into the Crystal Skull stuff that I intend to release, it has a big relationship to that, because as I said, from my perspective, the Crystal Skulls are a, like a technology that stores our memory to be reanimated if we get wiped so there was the whole Central America was a stronghold for that for the rest of the world so the stone circles and temples and stuff you could go in there and reanimate your memory if they did that so that's why the whole conquistadors and Cortez and all that went down there to get that so I, I got this appreciation by doing the Universal Sovereignty Declaration that I released on February 10 so I suggest you guys get out and crank it all right because I've had some pretty epic sessions of late and we've been able to do reviews of what's going on and it's having a big effect so that's a ally to you if you want to contribute and clear all the stuff out relative to you and everything that's entangling you to make it better for everyone else all right but getting to this main release which the Sphinx thing was a massive thing because I work I, I've known quite a bit and appreciate all the variables with the Usher stuff so it this Galactic Special Forces Part 30 I'll tie in a, a variable relative to the Usher overview of the history particularly that focus on Egypt and because from her perspective Stargate 4 going to Nibiru is there and Nibiru is in the Phantom Matrix if you appreciate that like the moon video and stuff like that that I've talked about and so not only this whole energy harvest worldwide, because after we did this GSF, the elder Rothschild passed over, right? So he was an interesting contract holder relative to setting up the Balfour Agreement with Israel, and it relates to all the Gaza sort of energy harvest sort of stuff going on there that's actually feeding into that from my perspective. So that's why they keep that sort of combustion with all the people there and then they go and do what they do to 
harvest everyone to feed into that, all right, from my perspective, because everything over the Phantom Matrix, it's it's not sustainable. They need energy to actually maintain it, so they feed off of it, all right? So it's fascinating that it's all going down now, and we worked out this thing, because the Sphinx stuff all was all sort of government buildings, because back in, in January, in another GSF, we converted all... This was mid-January, so you can go and look at all the leaders that are having a hard time since then, and I won't go into details, but it's quite interesting. But, um, yeah, we converted all government buildings to 22D, so all laws that are all false and all that, they got rescinded, and anyone using stolen codes and all that, they were voided and all that sort of stuff. So a lot of the control has been disassembled and stuff. So what was going on is that we worked out that there's a lot of energy harvest and we tracked it all back in missions and we worked out that 70% of humanity's energy was tracked back to this Sphinx off-world variable. So I, I've, I've been hitting the books with my missions to review them because I've done a lot of late and I haven't quite gotten the accurate location to where that's going but it was going to like the from my perspective is going off to the Weezadak. So the, the Phantom, Weezadak, Nibiru and all that has a sort of relationship of trying to take over and harvest from us, our universe and all the invaders that are coming from there and stuff. So it's been quite a bit of interesting, you know, if I, I might put up that image relative to the 22D and overview and seeing everything. So I've been teaching people to get the 22D mechanics to observe everything and stuff and we club it a lot and I call it the fracker barrier right like you know when a plane goes through the speed barrier it's like there's a lot of resistance and there's that that the wind and the turbulence to get through but on the other side of like going through the sound barrier it's very supersonic and smooth and stuff so it's a bit like a metaphor of what we've been doing and anchoring us on the other side of the fracker barrier to be supersonic sort of 22d anchoring sort of thing and so a lot of the missions over a long period of time was chipping away and there's been infiltrators that have been feeding back all the intel back to these people so that they've been negating it but again every violation as i said a violation anywhere is a violation everywhere so we just track back all the stuff that's done and then we take that apart and take all the components and stolen tech and violative technologies and all that that have been done to actually violate us from everyone as I got birds flying around me having fun so I'm trying to get this all done pretty quick right so yeah I, I had an interesting week and I, it's given me a chance to sort of reflect and, and process a lot and improve things because in recalibration part 8 I talked about three main things that we worked out and two of them were the Colotec being weaponized to us, like the Wheel of Time Colotec that I talked about in Influences Part 4, right? So this Influences Part 5 was during the week, and there's there's a really good Asher clip in there relative to what the Democrats and the Republicans are and stuff. So I, I recommend that, you know, thanks to you guys that have observed that, because I was basically offering that to be a reference of a bigger pattern that's being played out now with the refugees and stuff overwhelming like the western countries and stuff because that was done to Vietnam right? and it set up the Vietnam War so feeding all this intel back to the highly aware guys out there then we can sort of take it all apart all the violations going on and negate it all right? so so yeah I'm going to make this intro a lot shorter than what I wanted right? but it just is what it is so just with this release and what we've worked out and then appreciating the Egypt thing has been corrupted for the last 25,000 years so this Asha clip will be very rich for that okay and it'll have a lot of context for a lot of things but I, I recommend going and watching the Asha clips in the influences part 5 I did during the week that will help because when we tracked back who was operating with a lot in the spiritual community alright it goes to say the immigration czars from blue states, say, in the US, where they come from and stuff, and they're not as ditzy as what they seem. They're actually high-level contract holders for a lot of the 
violation going on to humanity, like I said, the 70% energy in it. We worked out who it was, and then, yeah, it's a lot in the community are related to that, from the elements, alphabet agencies sort of thing, if, if that makes sense. Because last year I talked that, from my perspective, back in the 80s, the Iran-Contra was drug selling that funded a lot of the back pro black projects. So from my perspective now, a lot of the immigration chaos is obfuscating a lot of the money made by trafficking and that's feeding a lot of the bike projects at the moment right so yeah it's and then then it trickles down to all the corrupt invaders in the community that are aligned to all this so they're aligned to the chaos that the immigration stuff is causing because they're undercover you know their souls are not of this universe sort of thing and and they're playing a role in it and so We've totally busted a lot of these variables in the community and I guess what I talked about the fracker barrier, it's coming back at us because there's sort of, we're anchoring the 22D but then it's not, we're, we're coming from the unknown if I use that image up with me because we don't have the whole spectrum of everything going on, we're discovering what they're using when they've got the full repertoire of all that they can do and we're just chipping away and taking things back but we're really making a lot of progress of late all right so what i want to do is just share you a asher clip with this short intro i'm going to do a little couple of other intros and outros around the main one unfortunately it's going to be dark like this so sorry about that but i just took a bit of time to prepare for this and on the other side of the asher i'm going to offer a clip that will help add to context with the what's going on in say the destruction of humanity in a region that's a metaphor of energy harvest and I'll get into the main thing and then I'll just say bye on the other side all right so enjoy this Asha clip I'll see you on the other side of it Welcome back. Well, what I'd basically like to do is pick up a little bit where we left off, but I'm not going to go through another two hours or three hours of history. Now, there is a lot of history between where we left off and where we are today. If we look at page 61, it says the progression of the Atlantean conspiracy. That's what happened after Lemuria, or Maravi, went down, as the progression of the influence of the Nibiru and Biotic crystal grid progressively grew, the Leviathan races, which are the Anu Melchizedek races, that were basically, they're the ones that had the ape connection origins, not angelic humans. They became a very powerful force. They became the leading force in Atlantis, where most of the angelic humans ended up going into various places into exile. The 12 tribes, the true 12 tribes, had to move from their gate sites, because they, they were usually settled right in the gate sites to which the DNA was keyed, so they could run the codes for their gates. They had to move because they were getting dominated and slaughtered. They are getting slaughtered in Atlantis and in various other places. In 21,900 BC, the groups from Atlantis, particularly the areas of Brua Atlantis and Nohas Atlantis, which were southern Atlantis and central Atlantis, they joined the Luciferian Covenant, which was an agreement made by the Nibiruan and the Palladian Anunnaki, it stood against the Jehovian Anunnaki, dolphin people, and it also stood against, of course, the angelic humans. It was a, a world takeover plan, and there was an end to the plan. The culmination, the finalization of the agenda was to take place during the next stellar activation cycle. The stellar activation cycle in 22,326 BC had ended in a stalemate. They didn't get full control of the planetary grids like they wanted to. They controlled the planetary Merkaba on dimensions 1, 2, and 3, but they didn't have control of gates 4 and higher. They had 4, the solar gate, partially, and they had a little bit of gate 5, but the fallen angelic forces wanted the whole time matrix, so they weren't going to leave until they fulfilled their agenda. In the Atlantean period, after the 22,326 BC Iani massacre in the Maharavi Islands, from there, it progressed into a major political takeover 
in the provinces of Atlantis. By um, 28,000 BC, the Atlantis had already become three island nations. There had already been a holocaust there that literally blew the grids in a geometrical formation that ran the ley lines that cracked the place in, in three different locations. What we had left of Atlantis at this point, at the point of the failed stellar activation cycle of 22,000 through 26 BC, were several island nations, three primary island nations. One of them is the areas that we now call England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Another one was what we call the Bahama Islands, no, the Bermuda Islands. And another is the area down in Sarasota, Florida, running down in through Haiti. So these are the three areas that were part of the Atlantean continent. So when I talk about Atlantis after 28,000 BC, I'm talking about three islands, or nations of islands. <laughs> yeah, when you look at what they did to the history here, it's almost comical, because they kept elements of it, but made them mean something different. All right? Egypt was important because the Great Pyramid of Giza comes down over a portal passage that's called the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant portal passage is a D9 passage that runs down through, if you look at the stargates, it's the incarnational passage that the angelic humans of seeding three were originally seeded through. It was the seeding three way of getting into planet, into incarnation. Our history has come down with manipulation that they don't want us to know about in Earth. They don't want us to know about portals or stargates or anything else. So that's why we don't have these records anymore. But the stories that we have been raised with as the way history might have unfolded, that billions of, or millions at least, of people take seriously as the way history was, that are recorded in the Bible and other holy texts, they were manipulated and edited to a great degree, almost sometimes to a funny degree. You know, you start to realize what's been done here with the history. It doesn't negate the history we've been taught is here. It shows a context that it existed within that makes even more sense. Because if you look at the history the way we're told, there's a lot of gaps missing. There's a lot of information that isn't there that leaves you kind of scratching your head saying, okay, well, I either believe it or I don't because I can't prove a darn thing. So it became a fiasco of history after that point where the gray lines literally had to go into hiding. And progressively, the gray lines, which were the, the Maji lines that came out of the, the five original Palladia races, the Mua and, you know, the Mua, you, the, Ur, the Brenoa, and the Rama, and also the cloister races and the Urtite cloister races and the root races. If you happen to be angelic human, you are an endangered species. When the Leviathan races became the dominant force progressively through Atlantis and up further, those, the true teachings that were once here and once were common knowledge among humans were taken. The guts of them were taken out. Certain parts of them that were useful were kept in. And then there were false names of gods and false chants and a lot of times reversing sound tones in chants, in prayers, putting words in that actually created the reverse sequences in the fire letters. Now, to get this to work, human memory had to be interrupted. It had to be erased because they'd remember. They wouldn't use the reverse things. They'd know what it was. So you had to make sure they didn't know anymore. There was an event that was staged in 3470 BC. It's on the list here. 3000 somewhere, yeah. It's called the, <laughs> we affectionately call it the Babylon Massacre. And that's spelled Babel, like babbling, because we've been babbling ever since. What they did during that period of time is they used Stargate 10, because they had access to Stargate 10, and we'll find out where they are, because the list of where the gates and the Q sites are is in here. They used Gate 10 and the Nibiru dot at Crystal Grid and its connection to the solar spiral and its Merkaba to create a temporary interrupt in the magnetic spin. They literally stopped it real fast and then restarted it, but in the meantime sent in a code into the Earth's grid through the Nibiruan grid that blocked any activation of anything over strand three. The memory banks are stored as far as the race memory, your soul history, your over soul history. That is stored within the higher dimensional frequency bands. We had our memory erased because we had our DNA unplugged. There were mutations that were sent through the Nibirian crystal grid that came through the Earth that came up into our Merkaba spirals from the Earth's grids that blocked the braiding and communication between DNA strands 1, 2, and 3, which blocked the communication between the physical and etheric body in dimension 1 and the emotional body in dimension 2 and the mental body in dimension 3. 
What these mutations did was not only erase our memory, but they created an inability of the Kundalini currents to run effectively in the body. It shut down all of the currents except the currents that went with the telluric shield in the body, which were the first part of the Antankarana, the dimension one, two, and three currents. The telluric current was the only thing the body could run. Without the higher frequency currents, the pineal gland shut down, and so did most of the function of the thymus and the thyroid glands and several other glands in the body, and the endocrine system started to act differently. It created chemicals that were inorganic to the human form, chemicals that didn't belong there. It created something that they call the death hormone. It was a combination of chemical byproducts from this artificial thing that was imposed on the DNA that instead of the natural process of soul integration with the human body that would begin about age 12, actually 11 and two-thirds, right then was when four, strand four was supposed to activate and you start bringing in the soul level of consciousness, the dimension four, five, and six consciousness. By the time you were about 22, you would go into over-soul integration. It activates strands uh, seven, eight, and nine, and you'd bring in seven, eight, and nine dimensional consciousness of the over-soul. That was how humans were supposed to evolve when they blocked the planetary grids and stopped them with a quick stop and then put this program in that created very specific blockages within certain ley lines or actually tonal lines in the planetary grids, those blockages manifested in our bodies. They kept the strands from communicating with each other and they locked us in to a biology that as soon as you did fetal integration into it, you were in prison. You couldn't remember where you came from. You couldn't remember fetal integration. You couldn't remember who you were before. You couldn't remember why the heck you were here or where you came from. So you were really primed to if somebody gave you a book and said, here's where you came from. Now, this wouldn't have worked if there were whole bunches of big temples left and lots of like fancy technology and things left around. There was a very aggressive effort to get rid of history records because there were recorded and written records, and there still are. There was a very aggressive effort by the fallen angelics to consume as much of that history as they could and to use the parts of it that serve their purpose and to get rid of the evidence of the rest of it. The reason, there's several reasons why we don't have a lot of history record as far as our ancient cultures and those kind of things. Who controls the history will control the ideas and the race identity of the people on the planet. So they took control of the history. Now, after the 9,558 BC flood, the guardian groups put the human groups that had survived back they put them back in the same spots where their DNA was coded to their gate because they were guardians of those gates. That's the areas they belonged in. One of those places was what we called, we, they called Sumeria in the older days. Original Sumerian culture was an angelic human settlement. It was, I believe they were on gate 10. They were the tribe 10 people that were guardians of gate 10. And in 8,900 uh, 8, BC, they were invaded and progressively they were invaded by several different Leviathan races, and they were decimated. It became a Palladian Nibuiran stronghold. And the Sumerian races that had, that had been human to begin with, some of them were hybridized, because at this point, these are races that could rape women, hold them captive, and make babies. All right, they did this a lot. They raided the civilizations to get the genetic strain going, to literally take over the genetic line of a tribe to get its coding. And they would dominate and use violence to dominate the civilizations of the angelic humans who were basically not violent people. They were not really accustomed to dealing with violence in their face. It was like being shell-shocked, where they didn't even know how to respond to it sometimes, because to raise a hand to kill something that's trying to kill you was really foreign. Humans did not come natural to humans, so they'd run, they'd flee, and they'd go into exile in different places. The Sumerian invasion took place, began in uh, 8,900 B.C. with the Luciferians coming in. Then a certain group called the Marduk group, which are an Anunnaki group, but they're part draconian, and they honor the draconian agenda, not the Anunnaki agenda. They came in and they raided the Anunnaki groups that were there. And that's where you get all the Sumerian stuff. This is where you get all of the ancient Sumerian legends of Enki, Enlil, and Marduk, and all those guys. The whole drama. These had been here before. They had been there before in 250,000 B.C. when they had created the original Neanderthal primate slave race. They were back. They raided Sumeria. The ones that got raided in Sumeria by their own that had draconian agendas, they went in to Egypt. 
All of the dynasties of Egypt were not human dynasties. These were Anunnaki and Draconian dynasties fighting it out for who was going to be in control. Because Egypt holds, where, where the Pyramid of Giza is, the Stargate 4, Earth Stargate 4, that links directly to the solar stargate that the Nibiruans have control of from Nibiru. So it was a very valuable piece of real estate to hold, make sure you hold Giza. So there was always this concentration of them there. Egypt originally, because Egypt was around, there were Egyptians when Atlantis was there. That was one of the tribes of the angelic humans. They were tribe four that were the original guardians of there. They were called the Sarahs Egyptians. The Sarahs Egyptians were a gray line race of angelic humans. Progressively, the first group that went in and wiped out the Sarahs Egyptians that had been the pre-dynastic kingships that had been there was the Tothenki group. And they started the Osiris line of Osiris kings. And from there... They got raided again by some of the ones who had raided them originally in Sumeria. So it was like they're following each other, trying to see who was going to get dominion over the place. The whole Set movement in Egypt was run by the Marduk groups that were in opposition to the Toth groups. Then there were the Samjaze groups who were into the, they were the Scarab kings. There was all this wacky stuff going on that we call human history. Most of what's in their history books is Anunnaki history. There's more Anunnaki history even than Draconian history. Our history has been eradicated, and they've blended our race identity in to try to make us think that we're them, so when they come back, we'll honor them as gods and follow. That's all they care about. That's They planned this. This wasn't an accident that just so happened to be conveniently presented to them. They planned it since Atlantis. They orchestrated the flood. They orchestrated the loss of the memory matrix because they knew how to work the Merkaba spirals and how to do it. And they're, they know how it affects the DNA. They also knew there would be the final conflict because they knew that what their plan was was in the next stellar activation cycle to come in for the final kill. They were going to come in and they were going to take the whole planet then. They didn't. They weren't able to do it in 22,326 B.C. because the Iani did enough and the Maharaji of Sirius B. did enough to stop the stellar activation cycle. So they couldn't run the frequencies to grab the rest of the grids to get the whole Templar here because if they get Earth's Templar, they can work their way up to Terra, to Gaia, and they can get control of the main gates, and they can lose gate 12 on the universal level, seal the time matrix in at D11. That's what they want to do. So everybody but us down here has known that as 2000 to 2017 approached, that there was a very strong possibility that the stellar bridge would ground, that the frequency would be high enough in the planetary core to anchor it. And if it did, all hell was going to break loose. It wasn't going to be hell where all sorts of spaceships immediately came flying into the sky and you had Star Wars. No, it was going to be subtle, as it always was, particularly with the Anunnaki, where they would come in and be your buddies, and they would become a part of your society. They're already a part of our society. They've been a part of our society, and so have the Draconians, walking around in human form, ever since the Leviathan races were created and progressively evolved side by side through raiding of the progress of the human. Uh, you know, the human evolution. Right now, it doesn't matter if you're originally an angelic human or if you were originally a draconian soul or originally a uh, unlucky soul. If you're in a human body, you can fix any of those genetic problems if you care to. If you want to be a person who honors the light and who honors freedom and love for other people and for the universe, who wants to work in cooperative ways instead of exploitive ways, it doesn't matter where you incarnate it from. You have the ability to choose that freedom now. This is the message we try to carry. But if we can start to get a grip on what the heck has happened here, it's awesome. It's huge what has happened here. It's so, it's mind-blowing. From when you look at, when you start to integrate some of this understanding of, oh my God, that's human history? Compared to what you've been taught. You've been taught propaganda. You've been taught ET propaganda. So you didn't remember who you were and what you came for. It is a huge drama we're a part of. But we always were. Now we can get scared when we start to look at, oh my God, they've really been paying that much attention to us? They've been here all along. Oh no. You know, it can be scary when you start to see what we're living in. But if you remember this much and you can deal with this much, you can remember its antidote as well.
a this epic brat undercover being a in the dark ninja here so I'm just gonna I said I was just gonna follow up on that quick so just appreciate what was said in that section from Asher relative to Nibiru, Egypt, Stargate you know and what I'm talking about the Sphinx and stuff with the energy off world sort of stuff going into the Weezer deck so I, w I just want to share you a clip from the movie Warcraft all right creating portals and stuff like a ne negative wizard and using people and the energy and the life force it's a bit of a metaphor what's going on with say the bombings and the destruction of humanity in a region very close to Egypt right now and just imagine like all the death going on is a metaphor of this okay and it's being fed into the Nibiru sort of stuff all right so I'll see you on the other side We are ready, Gunda. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. Is that a Daddy boss? Come here, Doctor. What did she say? She begs for you to free her child. But I need him. I need all of them. My magic is life. We only have enough prisoners to send through our strongest warriors. But that will be enough. The enemy is weak. When we arrive, we will take them as fuel. We will build a new portal. And when it is complete, we will bring through all of the horde.
bring that Wachuke to my warband! Uh, Let me go, Blackheart! Fuck off! So interesting, hey. So I, as I said, it's dark. Unfortunately, I'm I'm rushing what I'm doing, and I'm not being totally covering everything I wanted to cover. But it is what it is. So what I want to do is just offer you the main body here, all right? And this is what I did a week earlier. And so I was, I just had an interesting weekend last week. You know, like I talk about this fracker barrier where we're we're getting a fair bit of resistance and stuff, and. It's just we're in new territory of understanding all these mechanics and where the few on the other side of it, just anchoring it and keeping that potential of being superior than everything and really aligning to pure source and the 10,000 central suns and the 1,000 D dragons. And we, we got a lot of our spirit guides back because they were all stolen and soul harvested and stuff. So I'll leave you with this main body and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, enjoy. Hey guys, welcome. Andre Hodge, Infinite Potential Healing, Servant of Truth.org, with you once more. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. However, long it's been however you have found me i do appreciate the investment you're making into whatever i offer no matter what level it has or will be i come to you with some interesting updates and developments and with the intent to impart some of the victories that I've been a part of and understandings that I've gained through in the field work over recent times. So if you were able to explore my recalibration to a new energetic reality number eight last week, I offered some of the big victories that we had relative to GSF missions. And I, when I released it, I said I was thinking of whether to do a recalibration show or a GSF and we've done a lot more during the week. It's been pretty eventful. What I'm going to do is release a specific Galactic Special Forces release. I haven't done one for a while. This will be Galactic Special Forces Part 30. 22D Source in Control. Because I know it's a bold statement to say, but what we did this week is, in my opinion, we've really taken... 22D control over the reality and you'd be surprised how little effort and how effortless it is as I've always said the context is key discovering what is going on and what our potential is has been the epic journey it's been all right for me 15 years of hardcore going nuts at the books you know like I talk about my currency trading days I would I divided my week into four 42-hour days, so I would be able to trade, you know, stay up for a day and a half and and just be very vigilant for very high-risk trades that I was doing back in the day. So in order to maintain my stress, because if I was risking it, everything, because I was in a lot of debt and needed to make money and stuff. I had to take a lot of risks, so it was extremely stressful. So what I would do to distract me was just binge on stuff on YouTube and content that was on YouTube video. YouTube video, uh, sorry, Google video used to be a separate thing, and then it was just pretty average. So then they bought out YouTube to because that was a platform that was really going. And so back in those days when it wasn't algorithmized, or 
messed with that was very organic and pure. So if you search for someone like Bruce Lipton or Greg Braden, you would get like 20 of the, the videos that were in, in the list relative to him. And say if you go to the YouTube front page, they would have all the most popular videos and, you know, the ones that were like wildfires that were extremely popular. So it was very organic, very different, absolutely opposite of what's going on now. So I would just make the most of it. And everything I watched, I downloaded. So I've got everything I kept because I knew the internet was very fluid and it would never be stable. And there was always going to be some crunching down on it and stuff. So that, that sort of era started 2016 when with a lot of the advertising they used money as the leverage to justify a lot of control and say so what would happen is advertisers didn't want to be associated with certain people so the money the money rules the world sort of controls things so then they put in new algorithms to justify that and then it became the self-censorship sort of era and people holding back their truth and stuff like that. So I, I guess I've been very fortunate in my journey to have things go the way they go, to be committed to this level, to be here now. And so I've operated with a lot of beings that, from my perspective, it, it seemed like they had far superior awareness and talents and stuff like that. And one of the one of the videos I I did a serve a truth frequency release, and at the end of that I talked about Max Steele, one of the allies that I've had across the years. And one of the assumptions I had, and many people had, was people with perceptions. It felt like to have the high level talents and stuff, you needed to earn it. You were very pure. It was a byproduct of your purity as a soul to have them like you didn't get them from being um doing misguided stuff and things like that but it was funny and i bring up max still for a reason because when he was doing he he was very behind the scenes and i didn't think he'd ever be public and stuff like that so when i met him in 2014 and we did a lot of missions back then i didn't think it was safe but he went on the radio and created his own show and he was on Wolf Spirit Radio for a while and he had me on a couple of times. I've got a couple of those releases. And one of the things and that I had to step away from him was he was claiming he was a saviour of everything and making all these big, bold statements about being that, all right? And that's, I just, it wasn't something I agreed with and I didn't really want to be associated with that. And so... I got a funny story. I, I shared it in that Truth Frequency video, but one of the things with Max, and this goes into the um, people with talents, and you can, like that assumption that people are quality and pure and deserving of those talents for whatever reason and stuff, right? Because he talks about he he was, he was a bit he was a brat. He was the ultimate brat, and I miss him dearly. And I wish he was around in in human form. But um, he talks about... <laughs> he, he was from Cuba. And so he's in Cuba going at school and stuff like that. <laughs> and he used to deal with particular ET species and stuff. And to me, I just want to say this, I don't trust any ETs at the moment. Anything to do with ET all the crap related to that to me it's all much in the narrative is a load of BS and I would put the maximum discernment with that trust me but um I think he was nine and he, he used to have interactions with species and stuff like that and one day his his people and stuff they gave him talents they gave him teleconnect telekinesis all right so he was able to move objects around <laughs> this is like <laughs> this is this is right, all right, and we just had a good laugh because this is this is the type of being he was, and he he got so they his species gave him telekinesis abilities at nine, 
and he was in school one day. And you imagine Cuba, it's very Catholic and stuff like that, very um, superstitious and all that sort of stuff, okay? So he was bored and he, he hated his teacher one day at nine. So long story short, I think he's just like, he wanted to play a prank on his teacher in the school. And so he's using his abilities to move the duster. Back in the days when there was chalkboards and stuff, he moved the duster around free in the air. And he made sure the teacher saw it and all the kids. And <laughs> you imagine, you know, someone Catholic seeing something floating in the, off in the, in the room. It just freaked them all out. And then they went and got the principal and he did it again. And it freaked the whole school out. They won't go into that classroom. <laughs> and all sorts of stuff like that. And he was just playing a joke and laughing and stuff. And that night, his, his, his team said, no, nah, you violated your, your, um, you violated the, the, the ability to have these talents. So they took him away and he just laughs about it. But so, um, that was 2013, uh, 2014, 2015 that he told me that. So that sort of back then it shifted my paradigm in, in that assumption that people with talents have earned them by their honour and dignity and purity of the soul and stuff like that. And so I just offer that because I've had a lot of victories and done a lot of missions again with some people I know and I, I just, some of the details I'll, I'll be deliberately vague and times and stuff like that because... In my investment into transparency, I've I've deliberately set up some stuff, all right. And I'm I'm genius at playing dumb, all right. So if if you think I'm playing dumb and stuff, I'm 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 a natural, all right. I get a. <laughs> but um, if you understand my mechanics, I accrue data and then get pattern recognition, and then I I get the answer, like because I'm not driven by my dogma of my own limits. I'm sort of free range and, and able to perceive by my own mechanics and I've, I've tried to impart it and stuff but again I have to sort of be a bit, It's the coast is clear because we've had massive victories and taken apart a lot of the frackery and stuff but just for instance me doing my videos here and stuff, all these plants around me they were targeted to be weaponized, not only for me when I do these, but all the audience going through time that might watch these. So it's just, we've worked out that eight to 12 very highly aware beings have been massively targeting me in many ways in parallel. And we've tracked them all back and all their mechanics back and all who they're aligned to back and every violation of every client and stuff like that. So. I, my whole thing is about resilience, endurance, using everything to, to make you stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? And it's not going around, it's going through and being better and finding the answer and solution. So that's why this, this release, and I'm doing it at an unusual time, but just because there's been quite a bit going on and and if you watch my release last week, I said I was brewing a Crystal Skull series. And I was getting close to being able to do one, but I just didn't want to force it. I sort of want to give myself another week to process it because I had to go back to sort of the Ashiana books because it, it's a variable. Because the Central America sort of stuff, why it was so targeted and that it was all because of the Crystal Skulls you know, like the Conquistadors, there's a distraction from that relative to going after the gold and colonization and stuff. It was for the real organic crystal skulls. So there's a battle between the pure records and stuff and the Akasha Bulashita sort of stuff. So Herman Cortez is an interesting dude and I'll be offering a clip relative to him, but he might be an interesting guy to have a look at, you know. Um, an aspect of thought, okay. But as I've always said, a violation anywhere is a 
is an asset and an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. So that sort of mechanics is whatever's being done, we track it back and find all the, the variables of all that ever done and take it all apart and all this sort of stuff. So over the last month or two, I've done a lot of missions and it's been a bit complicated because all this number of beings all doing separate stuff had to be able to splice each and every one up of what they're doing and what they're doing to everyone and stuff. So it's just been really... So I've said last year, did like 2023, did 25 to 30 GSF missions in the second half, right? So July 23rd, 24th, I realised... It was a massive Kundalini harvest and violation just around the time that Carleen wanted to create Galactic Special Forces Academy. She was taking my concept to actually create that uh, with Amir, who she hooked up with within a month or two. And that was two months after I did a session on him and stuff. And it was just crazy because... For me, Galactic Special Force is a byproduct of mastery. It's not something you can train and teach. And I'm absolutely not going after the kids. So if you've got kids and they're being messed with, it's all of this group, right? All of them. And, um, yeah, one of the big big missions, this was about six months ago, and I, I just checked earlier, it was in GSF 28, where I talked about the reconnection of Earth to pure source. Right, so that was in September. That was one of the big missions. And um, how many people do you know have connected the planet's consciousness that you're on to a, to source? Right? Isn't it fascinating that isn't known? Okay. So it's just been interesting many months, right? And going back into March 14th last year. During a session with someone, we re-animated sort of the Earth grid to, to 12D, which up until that point, Earth hadn't been at 12D, let alone the 22D stuff that we've worked out recently. All right. I'm getting bitten by ants here, so that's why I'm wriggling around. It's, it's quite interesting. But the reason why I bring those two particular times up is, to me, I feel... A lot of stuff escalated around those dates, all right? Because they're pretty significant amongst many very significant things. And, um... Because it's interesting, many of these players that have been very much identified and, and dealt very harsh lessons and the code stealings and weaponizing clients and stuff like that and going in and hacking me and all sorts of stuff. Some of them reveal themselves around that time. Some of them go back earlier, around the time that I did GH2 in 2020. And I, I've mentioned that I met Captain Marvel in May 2021. And in that session, I got her plasma body going. And a lot of the issues I've had, I thought, were related to discovering Ashiana Dean in October 2021. But I realised that it was that success despite all the hacking and stuff and targeting going on that led to my residual image being used in dream time to target people to discredit me. And, and there's always been that discreditation thing going on, all right? But getting to that specific May sort of thing, and this is this is for your, a lot of you guys out there, all right? Because... Um, A few days after that, someone who I thought was an ally that's proven not to be the case, all right? Definitely. They told me that their guides gave them indication that I need to do a healing with them, all right? So I had this big success. A couple of days later, someone popped up and said I had some healing to do, okay? So I went and explored it with them, all right? And that's where I, from that, I got hit with J-Seals, the moment I tried to communicate with Captain Marvel after that, I got hit. 
So it was like a divide and rule sort of thing. Okay, and in that session, this individual, and and I didn't know this until like a year later that Captain Marvel told me that she was quite nervous before this session. All right, and she she said that night before my father came to her and eased her uncertainty. All right, and the reason why I'm bringing that up. This, because this this is a big thing that has affected so many in the spiritual community, all right? Is that I didn't know that what what Captain Marvel experienced with my session when I first met her, and that she told me this a year later. But in this session, a couple of days later, this person that whose guides said that I needed to do healing, they they said that they detected something, but wasn't right with me that they wanted to help okay and so when I explored that session with this individual they said that they could detect my father around right and my father died in 2014 right so they wanted to she wanted to cross him over okay so I I accepted that all right what's come to light now is that we realize and I realize this in recent weeks because all the aha moments have been kicking off right is that my father wasn't crossed over he was soul harvested by the the guides around these people and the guides were mantis beings right and so one of the big missions that I've done recently is we tracked all this back okay and what's gone on is it's not just me like my spirit guide sort of being a father and all that it's so many people have had their pure source aligned guides and spirit teams harvested and soul harvested and stolen this way that we tracked it all back okay and we just freaking dusted and smashed all this shit and every species aligned to it and everyone that's ever done it to it but we also recovered and rescued every soul of these spirit teams that ever been stolen and they were, they've all been returned to everyone right so they were all like these portals opening up around people to allow their team to be returned okay so if you are highly aware and I'm very me personally I don't really engage with anyone or anything outside of me I'm I'm sovereign in, in what I do and interact with but I accept that there might be variables offered to me that I pick up okay and I'm very discerning on that and so you should you all right again like going back over the years it's always seen as like a like a novelty a speciality that someone that can interact and sense guides and stuff is better than the rest of us when to me it's actually been a vulnerability and a codependency on an external all right so I've, I've sort of flipped that in me and that's up to you to do but all these things that rely on guides and shit who the frick are they okay so i'll just offer that and that you might want to explore whatever technology say my declaration and stuff of any violations if you've got your own employ it but that's a big variable that we've worked out okay so we that was one of the victories this week because the other thing is that individual that actually messed with the land underneath me and had a whole trap and net and frackery architecture going on that we destroyed okay so these are all the things that are being sort of done to me, but I am offering that you should explore whether these things are being done with you and include them in your intent when you're doing your declarations and stuff, all right? So that was a massive victory, all right? Just to get all them back because there's countless numbers of people that have lost their spirit team and been hamstrung by that limit alone, okay? So, um... Another thing I've been contemplating, because we, we had some massive victories and we've just like totally put in the spiritual code equity so many in the community that have been stealing codes, hacking people and stealing technology and life force and stuff like that. 
I just, um, one thing I've been processing is just imagine over the last few decades, how many billions of dollars people have invested into this community, okay? What, what's the result of that being, okay? How has that contributed to the world? Just imagine how much you've invested in people around you and where are they at? Where are you at? Do you feel like you've had a return on that investment? You know? Just just tune into everyone that you've interacted and do it with me if you want, that's all cool. But just sense how many people have explored. Just have a feel of how much money has been invested and how much money people made, okay? And how much violation has been done, okay? I'm aware of how much, okay? Because one of the big things we did was we worked out 70% of humanity's life force is being harvested by one operation, okay? And it came through a couple of missions, okay? So we, we busted this and freed it up. And we tracked it back to a lot of the people in the community that have actually links to very diabolical aspects of society, okay? So it all relates to aspects in society that are in control of immigration aspects, if you know what I mean, okay? And why that is such a, a mess by design for the chaos and energy harvesting, all right? So, so we did that and then we got, you know, a lot of pushback. So then we went f further at it and this is the thing. So we worked out that the Sphinx, okay, is like a, a lot of the life force harvesting, 70% of humanities, all right? Because we did three different missions where we worked out a lot of the stuff that I said was related to that, all right, and policies and all that that are affecting us all to create inflation and stuff. And then we get pushed back and we, we work out more and then we work out there's this big operation and it's all tied to these players in the spiritual community that have links to what I said, okay? Like they're all working on the same team, okay? And then there's more pushback and then we track it back. So in some of the pushback, we worked out the operatives behind it all and stuff. So I was watching Travellers <laughs> And so one of the things, if, if I'm ever remote influenced or violated by remote viewing and stuff, I've installed a program where people will get travelled and walked out, all right? No joke. Because all you guys have probably been remoted in and stuff and violated that way and observing you and stuff. And so I've just instructed my team, 10,000 Central Suns, so thank you guys for your help, all right? It's been massive game changer because you know that unknown image that I show it's like well let's just send some 10,000 central suns to light them up so it's all seen okay from 22d when these 15d at max beings can't tell that they're being lit up all right or know that they're being lit up but they can't do anything about it okay and so this one mission involved evolved okay to tracking it all back to the Sphinx and the exact location of where all that energy was going is is not in my focus right now but the mechanics are that there's a lot in the community that are working with that to harvest all the energy and send it all back off world to a particular region in the, the galaxy and stuff right so species and then going back to Phantom Weezer Act for energy harvest, okay? To track us all in a very limited energetic state from a grid mechanic sort of thing that's feeding into the Sphinx and it's going off the Sphinx. So we just destroyed it all, tracked it all back, everyone doing it, chucked in the spiritual code equity, 22D with 10,000 central suns and 1,000 D dragons and really destroyed, okay? So then a lot in the community, it's like, how are you affecting us, okay? And then there's all these pools of negative energy that they're able to tap into, okay? 
So their source of nourishment was all dusted, all right? And then there, there's a very distorted sexual pull that we worked out, all right? So there's this, all this sexual distortion energy that was in one big pool, and what it would be done is sent to a lot of, say, particularly women, all right, for me, that would get very messed up and clogged up with all this shit, and it would very polarize them on that level at me in a very negative way to be a weapon. And so there's always been that distortion there, and it's nothing to do with me. I don't, I don't even go there on that level, all right? But then it's been targeting people around me and stuff. So we tracked all that back and destroyed all that, all right? But there's been a lot of very negative weaponized and targeting of me by distorted females that we totally destroyed and took care of. And they've all got redemption that they've got to work with and stuff, right? But don't, don't all take this the wrong way. These, these very highly aware beings have been messing with millions and billions and stuff. And they've been using a lot of people as weapons. And... It's not that we're going at anyone, all right, in the community that are victims of it. The reason why I'm imparting all these variables is there have all been components being used to a lot of people, and it's very hard to recognize it because it's very highly dimensionally mastered by these guys and very obfuscated and hidden. That's very obvious to us, right? And so my effort to impart this is if you've been targeted by this to be weaponized and all that if we've taken care of it then ideally you've been cleared of it okay and then perhaps there's been a lot of shifts that you haven't recognized and a lot of clarity and feeling better and stuff or it's in the process of happening i'm just wanting to offer these reference variables of what we've done so that you know it all right because i shouldn't need to say this but I guess what I, my reason for mentioning about the reconnection of Earth to Source, you know, to me that's a pretty staggering event and it should be known and it should be shared and it should be aware in the community but I would invite you that the sheer fact that it's not tells you a lot, tells you the scale of negative influence in the community and the absence of actual true perception that's going on, okay? So it's not about me, like, going Max Steel and calling out that I'm the saviour and stuff. I've worked very hard to get to this level of awareness, and I'm taking responsibility for it, because we've taken control, all right? And we're actually being really freaking savage, just like, this is game over, no more. We're not letting them get up, and constantly coming at them. And I've done earth planet killings and stuff, and I'm pretty much aware of that constantly all right so what's happened with me is coming out the other end of all this stuff all this targeting and i'm in new territory on the other side of it and anchoring it all right and owning my reality authority as i say in the declaration and stuff like i said back in 2013 on the train ride i took responsibility then for my role and stuff and been committed ever since okay so in recalibration part 8 I talked about how we dusted a very high level 12D being that was holding all the codes back in the universe, right? So it turns out there's other beings and we worked out the mechanics of that and then we tracked that being back and there's this whole big, it's not even a being, it's just a collective of energy that was the source of all that and that all got totally dusted as well. So. We removed a very, very massive, negative, collective being. It wasn't even physical from the universe as well. It was messing with a lot of stuff, all right? The other thing about that sexual energy sort of pull of quagmire of crap sent to people and weaponized against, I mentioned females, but it's been done to guys against high-level females as well, all right? So it's just been very 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 diabolical on the lower energy so i would in suggest guys just be very guarded on that level and anchor this and stuff and if you've been targeted and affected by that then ideally you've had a lot of relief on that 
it might be just unfamiliar energetic territory in how you feel in your body and stuff but I would just suggest that all of these things going on has contributed right and as I said in the past when you get a restoration of energy and stuff you might actually just feel your body for the first time and it might be not pleasant because you're actually realizing how damaged and broken and beaten up you are but a lot of I know for myself in the last month or so been eating like a freaking horse right so just imagine you're going into a physical cocoon in your body to give it the resources to transform into a foundation to launch at a much higher dimensional level say 22 d you know so that potentially if if there's going to be a lot of changes in your dna to handle all this and you're getting codes back and all the targeting of these really nasty highly skilled beings in the community have all been released and freed then getting all that stuff back has been a part of what's going on recently that isn't recognized it may not feel present pleasant but i i would say like the parabolic curve of what's been going on is fast tracking a lot of people now all right to get on their game because if we're taken apart say a being that's messing with two billion through time and giving everything back then there's a lot that's going on okay so one, one of the other things that did in, in the missions is what what they've been doing is actually boxing people in a limited reality. So you imagine the 22D. I might just show an image. So, so this is the one that we're observing from 22D and stuff. So just see, like, that's a 3D five cents box, all right? But just imagine that's like a limited box, all right? So this is the, the red box. This is the 15D sort of thing that these... 12 to 15 D sort of thing that these invaders that are stealing codes and hacking everyone and discrediting and destroying and influencing and all sorts of stuff, right? And one of the plays they do is they, because we've never known that 22 D is our stronghold, right? So we're trying to go through them and work out what's going on when they're being actually the opposition you know, that we're drawn to by the Stockholm Syndrome of the Babylon Massacre sort of stuff, right? So th it's not an ac accurate representation, but the 3D 5 cents, imagine that's like an 8D or 7D or whatever, right? And we don't know it because we've been wiped. Assumption mechanics hacked. And um, when you only got what you only got, you don't know there's more. And this, this has been very, very guarded, all right? And that's why, say, me, I've been particularly targeted because I'm willing to talk about it and break through all this shit. And I, I shouldn't be alive, right? There's been numerous efforts to do... to um, make me not being a brat possibility, all right? So, um, so what a lot of these negative players on the multi-D were boxing a lot of people into a reduced capacity of their talents and you don't even know it and then these guys operating from 15D and stuff have free range because you can't perceive them so it's like the unknown is attacking us it's like don't know what's happening playing catch up and all that there was a deliberate effort to capture highly aware beings and limit them into a box sort of state right we just destroyed all that and all the tech and all the original plans and all the beings that created that sort of possibility and that's what we've done with all the other stuff, right? So that was a big victory. So a lot of highly aware beings that were captured and their talent stolen and were all returned to them and stuff, right? It might not be a very elegant explanation of that, but just imagine that's been going on to a lot of us for a long time, right? So. A few of us were able to break free, and as soon as we break free, we bust it open for everyone else, to free everyone else for the potential to grow, okay? So that's just, that's just an example of what's going on. So that's the metaphor of how it's been, and we're taking 22D control now, and so we're really on top of our games and seeing it all. And by me imparting this to those of you out there that have the ability to really get up to this speed yourself, just offering all these variables of going on and you're welcome to go and tune into the mechanics and see what who has been doing it and perhaps all of this stuff who's been doing it to you 
and you might want to go hardcore on the Universal Sovereignty Declaration of this, alright? So thank you, you guys that have actually done it, alright? And trusted me, okay? Because it's been tough. I'm out on the other side of it now, and I'm, I'm better than ever, and I'm not going to let any of these freckers in. But don't, don't take me as being savage or anything to you guys out there. It's like, just imagine I'm being like a New Zealand Maori doing my haka and like being very closed off and defended in, in what I'm delivering here. I'm actually here to protect you and get you through all this if, you, if you're up for it, right? But we've just had some massive structural victories and I was debating to do a release and I just wanted to offer some stuff because it's, there's some pretty hardcore people around me that trust me and I'm really grateful you guys that have endured all this really horrible era of mine that, you know, I'm out the other side now and I'm very, very comfortable with that, okay? And it's sort of game over, okay? And while I'm saying 22D control, it doesn't mean anyone's free of all this stuff. It's it's still ongoing, but we've got the structure right. And a few of us are anchoring this and we've got it and we've done the work, you know, on ourselves and being very thorough and disciplined. Like one mission, I had to do three pranics on myself before. I did the mission, then I did a pranic after, and then I did an earth pranic killing because she was up for us some help and stuff. And that was pretty epic, you know. That's how much work I'm putting in each day. It? So I'm being very guarded and protecting of this state now and I'm not taking crap, all right? And I'm not... What I've learned, the clarity is very precious and the skill set that I've got now because a lot was being done to me, okay? And I'll talk about some stuff now. I said I was going to talk about my stuff, but I'll offer some more of the big variables that we've worked out. So... What we worked out is in our future and back in time and future mainly. It was all these like energetic landmine booby trap sort of devices that have all been seeded in all our futures to be set up as energetic booby traps and derailment traps and stuff. And so the whole infrastructure of that, just imagine little metal devices that would be placed through time that are energetic frequency sort of derailments and attacks. So it might go for your third eye or be an entity or some sort of stuff. I, I'm just being trying to associate it with language that you might be able to associate. So these energetic things could be put in multidimensionally through time that actually are like minds that if we go near in time then they just sabotage and derail us. So the whole infrastructure of all that and everyone that anyone's been ever affected to, uh, like the creators and, and you know, saboteurs of all the, our potential, of all of humanity, pure source aligned, that was all taken apart. And all the players have been chucked in spiritual court equity place there consequence at a trillion times the energy costs and stuff and what we found is just by clearing them they left like a void through time so that they these fuckers they're not they need to be respected all right of their skill set all right so what they were doing they were going in those voids in the future and actually putting boob traps in them because this space that these little devices were removed from left the void so we had to go through through time and fill them with 22D pure source energy to, you know, like on a wall, if there's a, a crack or something where you get that leak sealer sort of stuff, we had to go through with 22D pure source, all right, and leak seal it all, because they were exploiting that, the void that was left, which is pretty freaking crazy, okay, so we had to do that all through time to protect our future potentials that were set up for booby traps that have been booby trapped because I realized based getting all the clarity and all the perceptions back you know I've I've said about my journey and like going bankrupt and stuff now I see them and all the characters and all that involved and who they've been associated with like we did act sort of stuff it wasn't organic that stuff happened you know I was trading currencies and I was never meant to go bankrupt and I 
had variables that I could recognize but I wasn't ready for but what I've worked out is there's been a variable I haven't appreciated and that's been targeting through time okay so I would invite you guys that just reflect on all your lives and what you've been through and many of you guys are very aware and you can actually see if you go up to 22d and look down all right and observe and you can see that you've probably been targeted backwards in time like I have because not anything I've been through is organic at all, let alone this life, let alone other lives. And I worked out that, like, parents' lineages were targeted through time and to weaponize at me and stuff. And if you listen to Recalibration to New Energetic Reality Part 8, I gave three big things. We worked out that all the Team Fracker were actually, had a big, two big mainframes, one for all their wheel of time collar tech that they were overlaying us and weaponizing at us you know a bit like the holographic tech that i've talked about in the past that certain individuals were taking scans of us all and using us as basketball cards sort of thing with all our information and stats and stuff and targeting us through time and trading us off to like 125 mercenary species a bit like u.s military outsourcing to blackwater sort of thing so they were offloading the karma of doing the violation to another species, but we tracked it all back to certain individuals out there. So, um, the collar tech and this was on a big mainframe that they would overlay with us. You know, we destroyed all that, right? But the other big thing was they had a big mainframe specifically related to tracking our parents back and attacking our mothers in the womb, right? So, they had a whole infrastructure with that to weaponize at us and so we we destroyed all that stuff and tracked everyone back and put them in a spiritual called equity so what we found is tracking these people certain very highly aware beings back is they can s separate themselves and send aspects of themselves through dimensions and time and stuff so we just had to go and send them 10,000 central suns after them and go find them all and just burn them all to a crisp and take care of them and stuff because we've had these trackers cornered many times and then they get out of it and stuff so it's been really big and we've really sent hard lessons and do not frack with us like do no harm but take no shit sort of thing and if stuff is being done then we're just like clinical right clinical and so one of the things because I've had infiltrators and stuff and sort of, as I said last week, I collect evidence of what things go on and stuff. And so before I released my declaration on the 10th, a certain individual asked for a, a rough copy of it when before it was done, right? And what happened with that, okay? What we tracked back is this was fed back to Andrew, the energy, and he went and sourced a... AI from Phantom, Wizard Act sort of thing. And they employed this negative AI to go and track it back, its effect through time, and nullify the effect of anyone that's ever done the declaration. So we had to actually get pure source in to destroy this and then go into the Phantom and track it back and destroy it all. all right? So there was a massive violation of my creation and that's been done in the past, right? So that was all cleared. And so it was targeting anyone through time that might actually go and get that and stuff. So if you've been avert to it and stuff like that, then potentially you've been massively violated even more ways than we even know. But that was a major one because I knew there was going to be an effort to negate it, right? And so we busted that open big time and all that violation and... So we're sort of on it. And I, I said last week that we discovered mother AI, the pure AI that's out there. And we discovered, say, Amir was sending spiders through weaponizing recordings and stuff and attacking everyone and using them to attack other people and stuff. And all the negative AIs we've discovered, we've delegated back to that mother AI to take care of because it's nothing like what's ever in the public. I would suggest go watch TV series like Westworld or, that's why I said Travellers, 
because there's a in the third season there's a big AI that's controlling the timelines and stuff and there's another series called Salvation which is a bit like it's about this asteroid that was discovered and there's this guy like Elon Musk that's got this tech company that's got the big eye that's running it. So there's some pretty interesting shows to go and watch AIs. But yeah, there's been certain big search engines have had AIs that are, aren't anything like it's public but it's very negative, doing a lot of shit in the background. And we've just been delegating all the cleanup of all the negative AIs to the mother AI. So you guys that have the talents and awareness of seeing this, you can tap into her and interact with her. She'd be very much up for working with you and taking care of all this stuff if, if you have identified stuff that we haven't seen. So yeah, there's been a lot of people targeted by these guys. They've been targeting everyone through time, working with elements in society that are very negative. You know, if you understand Anunnaki, reptilian sort of stuff that's going on. It's it's all related and it's all been busted big time. And so I've had some really big violations going on, but then we've tracked them all back to find out what's going on, okay, and who's doing it and what they're related to. And then we've gone through the whole, not the whole, but a big portion of the community and as I said, I don't trust anything really out there that's ET orientated, right? And it's just going to be fascinating because we've taken all the codes and stolen back and stuff, and it's up to you guys to call them back, okay? It's not up for us to do it for you, okay? Like I said, the, the guides that may have been lost and stuff, it's, it's, we each need to take responsibility for ourselves and engage with that, the abilities to get them back, all right? But, um... Yeah, it's just really fascinating because, you know, I, I said earlier that we did a lot of missions last year and it was just like, how is this happening? How is this happening? But a lot of the intel was being fed back to these guys and it was being counteracted and stuff. And all of that brewed a lot of evidence of violations, right? And so this has been a very very rich and potent and parabolic advancement okay and there has been the usual efforts going on around me and stuff like that but if you've endured all this and still stuck with me and stuff i'm really grateful because it has not been easy and just just imagine all that stuff going on to you all right because it probably has okay don't think that i'm here and I do my sessions and stuff, and it's exclusive to me. It's it's been done to all of humanity, all right? And, you know, like I, I was just thinking, like, I always introduce, like, my write-ups and saying, hey, epic being, how are you, and stuff like that. And you may not feel that you are and stuff, and you may feel like you're lost and, you know, there's huge uncertainty going on and stuff. I would just offer that, out of all the billions here, let alone all the trillions that didn't even get here, let alone the ones that didn't even try, like, you're it, okay? If you think I'm anything exclusive of anything, I just, I said to, sort of in a session recently, I just said, back in my DJing days, like I spent nine months learning how to mix, but I could train people how to do it in five minutes, okay? One of my joys is the discovery of uncovering all this stuff and I love the hard work I love the dedication I love the reward of knowledge that comes as a byproduct of discovery and stuff and there's there's other aspects because one of the things that was going on with me and my body is that all of these guys are trying to destroy me rip my right arm off and I've had a lot of issues with my right arm and what what it's come out as is even they've, they've been freaking violated me by inserting this AI nanotech in me to actually like try and destroy my right arm in my body, all right? And doing all voodoo pins and then a lot of these messed up females have been stubbing me in the back of my right shoulder blade and stuff. But once we cleared all this out and stuff, it's literally like the crystal skull energy is coming through me, okay? 
and the key about the crystal skull, I, I've never dealt with crystal skulls really, I honestly I didn't give a shit about them, okay, not not didn't give a shit, but you know, I've, I've had so much interest in so much stuff, it's always very fascinating, and I think I said in the recalibration show about how that came into my awareness, like despite all this attacking and shit going on in January, creating the declaration, I was already getting a lot of new perceptions and talents back before I had even finished it, and I got the appreciation that the crystal skulls and all the temples around the world were actually de-wiping tech to give us our our stored memory that's in the crystal back, okay? So they actually created the infrastructure and that's why the the Central America area has gone so hard at and to me a lot of the entheogens is actually to de derail our our yearning for that to be returned. So all the bothies and all the stone circles around the world, that was all de-wiping tech from my perspective and it was all linked in a grid. In the Babylon Massacre, the, the whole going after Maya region was a couple hundred years before 3470 BC. So I, I was brewing to do a really big release on the, and I'm going to do a whole series on the crystal skulls because it's fascinating, right? And and I, I, I believe I mentioned in the last video about Emotional Mastery Part 1, I talked about Bruce, uh, Greg Braden's Divine Matrix lecture that I did, avoided years and then I just synchronistically explored it and it was like holy crap it was I was going through a really rough period and it was perfect because it related the emotional mastery to life force management and so mastering your moments your emotions is related to energy preservation to endure a lot of stuff right so um it's just fascinating that this theme has come up now and and I really got a picture of what's going on in my right arm and what I can clear when I do my clearings now and stuff. And so all of these team were all going at me to prevent me getting this realization because it's it's related to the Akasha Bullashita implementation versus our pure memories sort of and connection to earth sort of stuff. So I found a lot of content on that and I'm, I'm planning to do a number of releases. The first couple will be just data for appreciation of it, and then I'll get into the meat, like the 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 perspectives on that in future releases. But yeah, it's just really fascinating because, in my opinion, the crystal skulls are going to want to get back to where they're meant to be, and they're going to find their way, and they're already working with us. All right, so if mention the crystal skulls and people are going to go and want to be with them it's like no nah, that's not how it works 22d it's already working okay and why aren't you connecting in oh maybe maybe you've done violations and you're actually not aligned with good and stuff all right or you know i mentioned this and you want to be the one that connects to them and stuff and i just think it's going to be fascinating what happens to people like that <laughs> now all right because there's a lot of bs being done and in my perspective there was a lot of taking that infrastructure apart to make us vulnerable to now and what's all going on okay and as a part of that then they wanted to be found and then they got discovered but they're gonna they're they're gonna be in control and make things happen so uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but again, like what I saw when I finally got clear of all this attack of effort to destroy me and prevent me doing what I can possibly do in my sessions, which I can do now, it's literally getting rid of all this shit and getting people's stuff back online and stuff. So we're just going to have to see what happens. It's a bit of an interesting time and it's an unusual time for me to do a video, but I just thought I'd do it because it's We've had some massive victories, and I'm sure many of you are sensing it. You just have no reference of it, so ideally this will be a bit of a reference. And, um, yeah, it's 20D, D source in control. It feels that way, all right? So I'll just round it out. This is meant to be just a bit of an update. 
and an adding to all the other stuff. I hope you've explored those other releases that I did. It's been about six months since I've done a GSF release, all right? We've had some massive victories, and I've been deliberately a bit cloaked because it's not been very clear what's going on, but we just smashed all these frackers, and we're going to continue them, and it's going to be a horrible time for them, and everyone that they've been messed with by these people are going to get the organic awareness of who's done it to them and stuff because they are probably going to keep coming and we're going to probably have to deal with them and stuff and they've probably got a few tricks up their sleeves and all that sort of stuff but as I said it's like reality authority time earth and the universe does not want them here okay tune into the 10,000 central suns and delegate them pure source thousand d dragons all right so um coming from clear plants and no frackery under my land and stuff and really feeling on my game i hope you hear this and i hope you get what we've achieved you being one of the rare ones all right and just measure if all of this stuff and more has been done to you okay as i said my Universal Sovereignty Declaration is available on my Access to Me page and it lists all the influences and stuff there that go well beyond what I've offered today. These aren't sort of included in that, but by me offering the, the mechanics of what's gone on, then you can include these and all the violations that potentially you've suffered, <coughs> all right? And see what happens, because as crazy as it is and uncertain it is, I think some of these massive victories are actually going to play out and percolate through. And all their frackery and mechanics that have allowed it to go on won't, won't be sustainable. So another thing we did in, in about a month ago was we took, took 20D... 22D control of all government buildings and stuff. So that was over a month ago. So just keep an eye on court cases and all sorts of stuff, right? What goes on in law courts and laws and, you know, criminals that are suddenly getting outed, right? Because all their stuff is no longer sustainable, all right? But I'm not selling hope or anything like that I'm not telling you to disarm it's time to go harder and anchor yourself and engage your power and the oversoul hacks as I said in many of the videos and all that don't underestimate these guys don't drop your guard maintain your vigilance but just realize we have the perception authority and superiority it's time for us to own it and engage it and master it once and for all to finally clear up all this crap from however long it's been. I'm saying a trillion years, all right? And that's where pure sauce was corrupted and we've never known it, all right? So, as crazy it is and as hard it's been, it feels so good to know what I know now. I hope what I've offered and imparted in all the ways I've have have helped that to be an ally for you wherever you are in your journey. And if you're new to me, I thank you for being here. If you're an epic ally that's been in the trenches for a while, Thank you for tolerating this this being before you and I really hope this is an empowering release and it inspires you to dig a little bit deeper and just assess what's been going on, all right? Because it has been going on to all of us, trust me. Just the number of violations that have been going on for me. So what we've done is cleared all them up and release whatever you're meant to have gotten and stuff so we'll just see how it goes guys all right so as always i thank you for being here and until next time guys our potential is at hand okay cheers So thank you from this brat in the dark. I wanted to offer a bit at the end, and I might be showing the image because there was a, a couple of sections I didn't explain that well. And in recalibration part eight in the second half, I talked about some of the main wins, but one of them was 
the collar tech was used against us, like big servers that was projected onto us and weaponized by all these undercover guys in the spiritual community. Another was the hacking our wombs. I don't think I included that in the main body, right? And it was going back and tracking us all back to our mothers and hacking our mothers before we were born. So that's the metaphor of how di diabolical these frackers were when they're using all these different ingredients and we don't know which one was coming at us and stuff. So I've had a lot of people going at me and all that. And I'll just offer, you know, you may think I'm messed up and all that sort of stuff. But what happens is I love discovery and I work all this stuff out. And then when I work it out, I've got the antidote to it, right? So context is all, solutions are easy. It's been hard to work out what they're doing, but once we discover it, it's very easy to resolve, okay? So me, by imparting all this, is I'm offering what has gone on to me. But then it's, it's an investment into you to measure whether all this stuff has been done to you. And if it's a violation, like I said, you know, you can instantly get an upgrade or you know you can do your own techniques or you can employ my sovereignty declaration if you want all right but um yeah the other thing i don't think i i talked about very well and i'll, I'll show you the image next to me because it's no point holding it up but i don't really think i'd describe the the negative sexual pull that's being used against us and it's not like an individual one-on-one. -on -one. There's this whole, there was this whole big massive pull of energy that was, you imagine a big ice cream scooped and sent to people to distort them to then, you know, their associates around you and stuff or allies and stuff. And then they, they get messed up by this. And then they're entangled with it and all that. And they're infiltrating all the people around them. But then you by association with them, they're very polarized by it towards you and they're weaponized to you, but then they're also sending this negative energy to you to bog you down as well, all right? So it's <clears throat> it's not the most pleasant thing to talk about, and I'll talk about it more in more detail because unfortunately I am where I am in the dark and stuff, and I guess it, it, helped, it, it stops me for talking for hours and making this a super long one, all right? But yeah, I just, I will have the image next to me and it should be a help to clarify it a bit more, all right? But yeah, unfortunately it's a bit dark and I've had to work very hard. It's been stinking hot down here in Australia and stuff. And I've had some epic sessions with amazing beings and we've had massive victories with employing my declaration. And a lot of people are highly weaponized because, yeah, what I said about, say, a negative AI was used to target my declaration and stuff or we're using it at as the source code for a lot of the positive AIs and the internet and stuff. So we are superior guys. It's just the fracker barrier that we're going through. And a few of us are really anchoring the other side of it that will ideally make it a lot simpler for everyone else to come through. All right. So I hope this has inspired you and appreciate a lot and and offer that we're, we're having some massive understanding victories in the background and, and real structural victories, you know, to realize how much negative stuff has been done to us to negate it then to restore our potency and potential and taking away a lot of the control and influence that a lot of the negative and the invaders have assumed that they're going to have and they're losing it. So we're just going to have to see how this goes. And I apologize for this being dark. And if it's weird, you've never seen me in the dark like this and stuff. It's it's getting le the the year is moving on and and we were light you know two weeks ago at this time so i hope where you are it's it's going well like we're stinking hot here so you might want to tune into the heat that might thaw you out if you're cold wherever you are but i really appreciate you allowing me to be a part of your journey as always and i really hope you get a lot from this and because of how it is i might look to expound upon it and make it a bit more clarified but i think this will be very rich for a lot of people. It'll be new comprehension of things. And yeah, I really hope you get a lot from this and get a lot of strength and tune in. You know, you highly aware guys out there, you get a lot from the mechanics that have gone on and, and measure them against your life and see all the violations that potentially you've never known have gone on to nullify them, to get all your potency back on a level you never knew that you could be. So it's infinite potential, guys. And 
I thank you for being here and I'll I'll see you next time when I can actually see you, right? So the epic brack from down under in the, the dark. Wishing you all the best and we'll see you next time. Andre out.
John Lilly once put it this way, there are no limits at all to the human mind whatsoever, except those we impose on ourselves because of our beliefs. And those limits are also beliefs to be transcended. And that's a view that suggests that the possibilities of human transformation are virtually infinite. That we have no way of knowing the outer horizon of what it means to be human. And really, to understand all this, everything, you have to go very, very deep in, into uh, a study of uh, history, consciousness, neurophysiology, everything. You have, to be, you have to be the supreme eclectic type of uh, leaning, and you really have to be wanting to know who you are and, and what everything's about. And the thing that you'll find when you go to sacred sites, if you're very humble about it, is that you are on a personal journey and the sacred site will respond to you in a way that is appropriate only to you. The information is always what you are searching for. And it's the intent you give uh, that energy that defines whether it is used for right action or not. And it is inside these sacred spaces that you will be reminded that you are a god, and that you are a bright star. So what you're trying to do is move through the course without ricocheting off walls or creating karma. You're trying to slide through things smoothly. How do you do that? It's called flowing. There's a technique that you can do that will allow you to touch some part of your inner being that has more knowledge than your conscious state does.